episode is brought to you by all of the wonderful Play Comics supporters on Patreon. For just a dollar a month, you can be getting these episodes early, as in when I'm done editing them, and, you know, plenty of other wonderful things too. And it's just a dollar a month. You can do that. I'm Kier from Gallifrey Public Radio, a Doctor Who fandom podcast and part of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the show you're checking out now. Shows in the network are individually owned, and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting geeky shows at gunnageeknetwork.com. And welcome to Play Comics, where once again, we're just forgetting about the whole video game thing, although we might come back to that later eventually. I don't know, because I am here talking to Michael Conrad and Becky Cloonan, mostly about Wonder Woman things, because that's what it was going to be. But then, you know, Texas decided to freeze and you know, <laughs> everything else. <laughs> we, we barely lived through it. We, we were so excited <laughs> to talk to you. And then... Um... The nature got in the way, so I'm I'm so happy that we're finally making it happen. Yeah. Nature is stupid, and sometimes this is one of them. Yeah, we've definitely, as as humans, it's a shame that we've kind of pushed the needle in 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 a bad direction. I, I do believe in global climate change, and I think that we're seeing. We're seeing kind of the results of um, not taking these kind of things seriously. Um, it's not supposed to snow like that here. <laughs> it's it's just not supposed to be that way. And now we walk around the neighborhood and all the different um, like succulent plants. We have these giant, beautiful succulent plants all over the neighborhood. And they're all dead now. And they smell awful. They smell terrible. And it's because we have a dependency on fossil fuels. So there we go. Nice light conversation. Kicking it off. I mean, how else are you going to start a conversation, really? Let's just go ahead and get some political stuff right out of the way. Yeah, we're, we're dying. <laughs> We've done it. Uh, I'm, hoping that, I'm hoping that humanity starts to... Um, starts to see the toll that we're taking on the planet uh, so that we can hopefully do something about it. But yeah, it was with the big snowstorm that we suffered through here. Uh, it was a real eye opener. We, Becky and I both care a lot about environmental issues, um, but that was a really profound kind of close to home situation that, that really gave us pause. We try and uh, be mindful about environmental issues as much as we can. Uh, we we run a web store together, and it's always been really important to us to try and make sure that the stuff that we use is recyclable or plant-based or something that will biodegrade easily. Um, but yeah, man, see, like you when you go through something like that and you see what's going on, uh, it just really makes you think, like, what more can I be doing? I don't, I don't know what the answer is. I think it happens at a macro level, but um, either way, the, the biggest, most direct result of that was we lost power for a bit and we were unable to talk when we had originally scheduled this. So, um, Yeah, we, we got out kind of late. We were pretty lucky. A lot of people went through a lot worse that week. And now it's back to being like in 70s, so it's just, you know, the snow was melted in the matter of days. It's crazy. Here in the twist of the day, I'm actually going to make all that relevant. So one question my wife really wanted me to ask y'all, and I don't know how much of this was because I showed her a picture at like 1030 when she was trying to go to sleep, was who decided to put in a squirrel with a horn into your newest little run on Wonder Woman? I'm raised that's me. That would be me. She says thank um, you. She loves it. You're welcome. Um, she has great taste. 
uh, lovely. I love her already. Um, Ratatosk is maybe one of my favorite figures from Norse mythology, so it only made sense to like throw him in there. He's a little messenger squirrel or rat or rodent or whatever, and he's got a little horn or a tusk. Um, kind of a trickster because he's a messenger, you know, and he just runs up and down the world tree all day just delivering messages. And I was like, we got to incorporate this somehow. Like, uh, and, it, and it just made so much sense for like animal companion. You know, right out, right out the gate, it was like, how do we make this a thing? Because it just felt right. You know, sometimes you hit on an idea and you're just like, this is the right thing to do. I don't know how it's going to be done. Um, I think Michael was a little more I was, concerned. Yeah, I was, I was concerned. <laughs> I'm, I'm, our partnership as a writing team doesn't, I don't see my role in it as saying no. I see it as saying, <laughs> how are we going to make this thing work? And right up until right up until it came out i was really concerned that people were going to be really mad that we put a pokemon into wonder woman's world everyone was excited to see oh what's this new creative team gonna do with wonder woman and then they flip open the, the cover and one of the first things that they see is this weird like furry guy running around with <laughs> with wonder woman but thankfully I, I think people showed up with open minds and ready to have fun response to ratatosk has been has been great. I think the only thing that gets talked about a bit more than Ratatosk is is Siegfried, who everyone uh, is just in love with. But I think um, I think Ratatosk really surprised me and how how well received he was. I'm I'm pretty happy about it because, uh, like I say, I, I could have seen it going a completely <laughs> different direction. How much fun has it been for y'all getting to mix up the different mythologies here? It's it's been fun. It's also been challenging because for some of the stuff, there's um, there's pre-existing continuity within the DCU where they've addressed certain things from mythology. So it's been a bit of a wrestling match to try and figure out how much how true can we stay to the mythology and not negate things that already exist within the DCU. And thankfully our our editors have really worked with us on that and allowed us to kind of, you know, if if something already exists within the DCU, they understand that within the the sphere of the gods, um, things are a little bit more ambiguous. So we can lean more heavily toward uh, the mythological representations rather than you know, what's showed up in the DCU before. We both, Becky and I, we've known each other our whole lives, and one of the major connective tissues between the two of us has always been a love for mythology. So having this, you know, my first major project with DC be a a story about mythology with somebody that I grew up loving mythology with, I couldn't ask for a better situation. Yeah, it's it's been so much fun. A lot of it is just that balance of the mythological with the superhero, and it's finding that right tonality um, that is, I don't know if it's tricky, but it's um, something that we're just constantly mindful of. You know, you don't want to lean too heavy on myth because we're, you know, it's not a, we're not telling a fable. We're we're telling a superhero story, but at the same time, it's different than it it. it has to feel mythological because they're in the sphere of the gods so it just makes sense to have that flavor so it's it's just finding that right balance you know what made y'all want to go write about wonder woman man i think so it's a it's a big challenge right because she's been around for 80 years and a lot of extremely talented and well-respected people um, have contributed to this ongoing story of Diana. So I think, I don't know, it, this is going to sound maybe foolish to say, but I think there's like room to interpret her and room to bring out different elements of her character. As good and as great as some of her stories have been, as many of her stories have been, we still think that there's room to further define the character and to flesh out certain elements about her personality and what role she plays within the DCU. 
So in that way, it's really exciting. If I say Batman to you, you already have a very clear picture in your mind about almost everything about Batman's life, his world, his ethics. With Wonder Woman, it's it's a little bit different and it's interpreted a bit different with every creative team that comes onto it. So what we're doing is we're trying to look at the entirety of Diana Prince's existence and the different iterations that have showed up within the DCU and trying to cherry pick those elements that we think truly define her and bring them to the fore. Do I think we'll be successful? Yes. 100%. 100%. Um, and it's because <laughs> we love the character and we've we've got a real goal with what we'd like to accomplish with her. So hopefully r- readership uh, can get behind it and we can have a, enough time to work with her to be able to accomplish these goals that we're shooting for. I mean, I don't want to spoil anything for you guys, but I think you're doing a good job with it. Well, thank you. <laughs> you might have yeah, this comic writing much. thing down. I I don't I don't know. Like I I was so surprised, like I say, with people responding well to Ranatos, with people responding well to Siegfried, two characters that kind of came out of left field. Um, people have been very giving and very uh, kind with their response because we did everything you aren't supposed to do when you begin a run. We depowered her. We gave her amnesia. We gave her amnesia. <laughs> we gave her a furry friend. We had her kissing somebody that wasn't Steve Trevor. Uh, <laughs> we had her drinking. We had her get drunk, like so drunk that she like had a near death experience in the afterlife. So these are these are things that. We're really pushing the envelope. Pushing, <laughs> pushing the envelope, but also... It, we like, had her get decapitated in, like, the first three pages. Yeah. We cut off Wonder Woman's head. Yeah. Either way, like... I didn't think they were going to... When we wrote that, I was like, they're never going to let us, like, get away with this. It's too... It's too much. No one wants to see Wonder Woman's head cut off, you know, in, like, the first three pages of a book. I mean, you have but the it, perfect place to do the... it, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, what, it's what's supposed to happen. Uh, uh, it really speaks to kind of this this new direction that DC seems to be taking um, in terms of giving the creators like some real room to be able to explore and to try some different things. I, I really, that's the only thing that I can chalk it up to. The rest is completely in the hands of, you know, the zeitgeist, you know, whether readership yeah. appreciates it or not, it's, it's out of our hands, so we have to be dispassionate and we have to be believing in the material and just kind of let it go. I would say like 95% of the book's success is due to Travis Moore and Tamara Bongola, who are just everything that they do, it's like magic. Yeah. <laughs> and them working together, it's so cool to see. Tamara's one of my favorite colorists in comics and everything Travis draws is like just it's every page he sends in i'm like my jaw on the floor and as an artist also i'm incredibly jealous (laughs) of how good he is um and i think part you know when you're talking about like siegfried and ratatosk and people accepting of them i think it's travis just draws them so like he encompasses everything that we wanted the characters to be he drew it and added so much charisma like his drawings have so much the heart and humor and like he draws people you want to be friends with and and the characters on the page have a connection with each other that is like undeniable so it's it's a rare thing to see someone of his caliber and i can't believe that we get to work with him yeah we're, we're super lucky in that way comics being a visual medium of course of course of course so much of the credit is really due to the people that are creating the beautiful visuals that are within the book. And that also includes Pat Brousseau's incredible lettering. Yes, yes. Uh, we, we sometimes get a, get a bit verbose, as you can tell from this conversation. I, I especially am a talker, and I write the way that I talk with a lot <laughs> of words. So to be able to have these like bombastic action sequences with a ton of words and have it not be alienating, I think a lot of that credit really goes to Pat and, and how he lays those words onto the page. Yeah, it's just the whole book, the team is great. Um, so, you know, we, we we can only take so much credit. Which <laughs> yes. is, you know, maybe not, uh, not that much. 
as long as you're willing to accept some of it. We'll accept some of it. I'll take more than my share, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> so when we were originally going to do this, um, future state stuff was coming out. And I would, I probably wouldn't have seen this newest issue at all. Because I'm not even going to pretend that I can get a advanced copy of that. But what was it like for y'all writing in a short, like, this isn't really connected to the timeline stuff right now kind of event? Um, I don't think... I don't think either of us ever approached it in a way where it felt uh, non-canonical, if that's a word. Uncanonical? No, non-canonical. non-canonical. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, right. no, we, we never approached it as something that was outside of the mainstream continuity of the DCU. We wrote it as, this is the end, and that's the way it's forever going to be in my mind. Yeah, we, we definitely just approached the, especially the Wonder Woman story. I was like, this is... This is how it ends, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Dark side, Superman, into the sun. Get, 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 get him out of here. Yeah, it's it was a dream project in many ways. And again, uh, credit to the people at DC for letting us do something like that. It's it's an unconventional comic. You know, Immortal Wonder Woman is very much um, kind of like a meditation on finality yeah and there's a lot of like flowy word like it's a little more poetic i think um the prose that we we were using is a lot different than how we're writing um regular wonder woman rather than immortal woman. <laughs> right um so to see something like that on the stands from you know one of the big two publishers uh where it's not giving people what they want it's not necessarily the book that people were out clapping and stomping around being like, we want to see very sad Diana in space. People but, wanted to see Jim Bartel drawing, drawing yeah. two issues of Wonder Woman. Yeah. Back to back to the artist again. I got to give props to Jim Bartel. We knew she was drawing it from the moment we got the, well, maybe not from the moment we, we got the, the call, but... Before, By the time that before we, like, we started scripting, right? Yeah, we and, knew it was her, and, and so, we were like, "Okay, yeah, let's yeah, write yeah, it yeah. for her." Um, we knew that she can draw people feeling feelings. We knew that she could draw. Oh, she has such emotive art. Yeah, and she, it's gorgeous. She can do space her like colors. Like everything is just. I just love her work so much. So we were like that story came together a lot of it in part because of jen's work yeah and we kind of followed her lead as far as like using her as inspiration for our story i think we surprised everyone because they said you know we want to do this book called immortal wonder woman and it's about wonder woman way 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 in the future and i think we surprised them by putting her that far into the at future. At the end of time? <laughs> at the very end of the future? Like, how about a comic where no one's alive? In? Yeah, that's good. Um, so, yeah, it was. It, I think everyone that was part of that team is, is very proud of that book. Um, I don't know that everyone that picked it up loved it uh, in terms of the story, but I, I think it's going to be one of those books that people will continue to reference for years and years. So in that way... Um, I'm I'm so happy with with just what we were able to contribute there. Like I say, uh, whether something's part of continuity or not is really dependent on how much people like or dislike it. So if people really love Immortal Wonder Woman, specifically creative teams of the future and editors of the future, uh, you might see it referenced again, and that starts to pull it over toward a continuity that that you know books like dark knight have kind of ended up in dark knight isn't necessarily the true future of batman uh, but to me it is and i think to most people it kind of is now i'm sorry if this ends up being a little personal but how much did y'all tear up when you were looking through the final version of the immortal wonder woman stuff 
I, the Spectre scene, when we were writing it, I was like choking back tears. It was so much like fun to, I love sad stories. I love writing sad stories. I love thinking that people are going to cry when they read something that I hate. I don't know why I like this. It brings me joy. So in the tears, there was a little bit of glee, um, knowing that I this might be a book that will elicit some feelings from people. It's just a... For me, for me, it was really when the artwork started coming in and seeing, like, oh, my God, what have we done? Like, <laughs> we're, we've done something terrible. We've, we've killed these characters that I love so much. Um, yeah, it became real when Jen was turning in pages. It was like, oh, we, we did that. Yeah, yeah I, felt, I felt guilty. I felt, uh, I felt bad. But I think, you know, for as, as willfully sad as a mortal Wonder Woman is, I think we end on a really positive note that leaves. It's like leaving the door unlatched. Um, you know, there's a little bit of hope at the end, and that's that's oh. what Wonder Woman is all about. Yeah, that's in a nutshell. That's what that character is meant to represent in a lot of ways, and for a lot of people. So, hopefully, people when they when they finished up Immortal Wonder Woman, they walked away from it. Uh, yeah, we wanted them to experience a full range of emotions. So, hopefully, we we hit a ticked a couple of those boxes. I mean, I was definitely reading it in the onion cutting factory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've, we've heard that review from a number of people. And that's like, that's the powerful thing about, about storytelling is when, you know, something can, one day you're just typing it on the computer and then months later, somebody's experience connecting it to things in their life or their relationships with these um, fictional characters um, that's a really that's a powerful thing and that's something that's something that we're super lucky to be able to be doing the kind of job where you know one of our main things that we are meant to do is to make people feel things it's really weird to think of I don't I don't often think about it in that way but what what is storytelling but you know playing with people's emotions well how long do you think it's going to be before you see somebody with you know a tattoo from your run of wonder woman um i don't know i might be the first person to do it i love <laughs> it <laughs> Like I might, I might. You get like Siegfried and a little heart on your shoulder. Oh, oh, you don't have them on your shoulders. Yeah, I've got a ton of tattoos. <laughs> I got, I got some, a couple little s small spots. So maybe I'll get Ratatos popping out. Somewhere. I'll get the Siegfried tattoo then. I don't <laughs> see. This is the terrible thing about you. You create this heartthrob character, and then Travis draws him, and then you gotta. Becky, for those of you who are wondering, Becky and I are romantic partners, um, <laughs> which is the best, that's the best that I can do right now, knowing that you're uh, talking about Sig getting a Siegfried tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all love Siegfried. I would love to get Siegfried's face tattooed on my face and his hair tattooed on my hair, if that's even a thing. Do it? Yeah. You should do it. I wonder how they pulled the hair off. I'll though. do it. <laughs> His hair is it's is so, so magnificent. I just want to run my hands through it. It really is though. I imagine it smells like cinnamon. It's so tousled. <laughs> oh, cinnamon, yeah, definitely. So what is it like for you guys working together? Because I know I've tried to do a couple things with my wife and um, it mostly does not go very well because we're both kind of hard-headed and have our ideas and want to do them. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like that with us too. We're both um, people with a specific way that we like to tell stories. Those specific ways are oftentimes quite different. Um but thankfully, the, the differences in, in our storytelling seems to go together pretty well. 
Um, it gets easier every time. The first couple things that we did, you know, there were, I was getting into my feelings a little bit, or, you know, you, you want to be a strong advocate for your ideas and you fall in love with your ideas. And every like writing 101 teacher will tell you like, you got to kill your, kill your darlings, you know, don't fall in love with your ideas. Everything is subject to change in the editing process. And I don't think that I had quite learned that lesson yet. I hadn't learned how to advocate without getting uh, too emotionally invested in it. Um, so there were there were moments where I was kind of huffing around, but I have to defer to to Becky um, as a storyteller because she's this is her medium. She really gets it, and I've learned so much by shutting up and paying attention when <laughs> when she's making a change. Uh, also, just the way that we work together. Oftentimes, I'm the person who will who will write the first draft of something. So, of course, it's going to feel like Becky is changing a bunch of things because she's going in and and editing a draft. So what is there to do but to change things? Um, Oftentimes when I go in and, and do stuff, it's like thinking about the art. Like, I'll go in and imagine Travis drawing it and being like, you know, how would this page layout look? And maybe I could shuffle a few things around and, you know, move some panels from here to there. Um, yeah. And Becky being a great artist with, who understands the visual language of comics, um, she can really, I think, visualize the pacing of a page uh, at an expert level. Whereas I'm pretty good with stuff like that, but you're very good. Uh, oftentimes, I'll I'll say screw it and still, you know, expect there to be. <laughs> uh, you know, an entire essay in a single, in a single word bubble and your word balloon. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. we have the, the thing that makes it work, I think, is that we both have the same touchstones for like when we talk about a book, we know we share the same idea of how it it's going to be, you know, and we both want the best book that we can both make. Um, and that's going to be a combination of the both of us. Uh, Michael comes up with these crazy ideas that I would never think of in a million years. We have very different tastes in things, you know. Of course, that overlaps, you know, the Venn diagram, but we approach story very differently. We write very different. We, like, even brainstorm different. Like, I'm the type of person, when we think of a story, I throw five ideas out there, and they're all in completely different directions. And Michael's like, what are you doing? These are completely different ideas. Like, I will just think of something, even if it's not good, and just put it out there because it might lead to something who knows where it goes. But that's how my brain works. It's kind of scattershot and a little chaotic. Um, I think Michael's more of a sniper, you know? He'll, he will go on these long walks and ruminate and come back and have this, you know, a plan, like, ready to go. It's like, here's the whole thing. And it's all mapped out. And I'm I'm much more like just stand in the middle of a room with a bunch of ideas and you know kind of muss everything up until it kind of works together um but you put those two different ways of doing things together and, and it actually ends up like after a few issues um and luckily we worked together a little bit before this yeah. so coming into wonder woman it was pretty easy easy sail smooth sailing easy sailing yeah with every creative partnership there's going to be moments where you feel like this this is tough you know, it's better to be alone doing this thing. Um, but back, like, we keep going back to this thing of we have different methodologies and we're very lucky that they go together well. If we both wrote in the same way, I think then it would be a bad partnership because it would just be two people who were weak at the same things and strong at the same things. Uh, with this, um, it really feels like if there's something that I'm struggling with, I know that's exactly the type of thing that Becky will show up for and and be incredible at. We, ju we just finished writing an issue today, um, and there was so much stuff in it where I was like, this is not for me to be writing. Like, this is Becky's, this is Becky's world. Uh, so for kind of the first time since we've been writing together, we broke, it, broke an issue up a little bit. So we're we're constantly discovering new new moves, 
and it's making the thing uh, more exciting. And I think the results are just getting better and better and better. I'm I'm very excited for for the world to see what we're working on right now, uh, because if they like issue 770, man, <laughs> in a couple months you're you're gonna be blown away by some of the stuff that we're doing. And it's like it's stuff that you know you've written a good issue when you think like your editors come back and they have, you know, they've got their notes, but they're also excited. And they say, you know, we can't wait to see how this turns out later. And then you think, I can't believe we're getting away with the things that we're getting away with. And that's when you know you've done something fun and good because you feel like you've gotten away with something naughty. <laughs> wait, did you just say I have to wait a couple of months for the next issue? Oh, no, I'm saying like as this thing continues to unwind. Okay. Wonder Woman's going to be coming out monthly and, and, and pretty shipping. soon it's going to be double shipping for like two or three months. There's going to be two Wonder Woman comics a month on the rack, which is which has wow. been like really scary for us because we've had to um, we've had to write quicker. So I'm, I'm a very fast writer. I'm so slow. Becky's very methodical and slow. I ruminate too much. Um, so yeah, it's 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 really exciting it's gonna be really neat when things are double shipping too because it'll just mean more story it'll mean we can we can tell more quicker i've never worked on a book that's done double shipping lucky for me until now i guess (laughs) (laughs) oh i'm so glad i misunderstood you there because that yeah, would have been if it was going to be a few months, I, 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 would I think be you on just the... meant further down the road. Yeah. Okay, well, good. I, I can mean, live with that. 771 is going to be, it, it'll be out next month, and it's it's even better than 770, yeah, in 771 my humble opinion. Is great. But yeah, as it continues to go, it's like we're just building up this big, weird head of steam. And, and one time when it was announced that we were taking over Wonder Woman monthly, I said, yeah, it's going to be a weird ride. And somebody who had like, I'm the CEO of Wonder Woman as their Twitter handle was like, weird, great, like bummed that I used that word. Wonder Woman's weird. It's a weird comic. Wonder Woman has always been weird. <laughs> Anyone that thinks Wonder Woman is not weird has failed. You've, you've failed. I mean, did they just forget Wonder about Woman... space kangaroos? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, uh, in the brilliant backup for 770. Yeah, Jordy Belair brings the, in yeah, Jumpa. Jumpa's back, maybe. <laughs> in a big, bad way. <laughs> I have yeah. to admit, I didn't read that part yet. Oh, oh spoiler, spoiler for me. Do, do, yeah. <laughs> Space kangaroo. <laughs> do yourself a solid. You're going to love it. Well, yeah, that's what tonight is for. Yeah. A little treat. I've just been talking to too many people lately, so I had to make sure I read stuff that I was talking to people about. It's all, it's, yeah, we get it. I it's a good it's problem good. to have. I have too many good things to read. That's, <laughs> yeah, there are worse problems. I was just saying this the other day. Uh, people have been talking about this movie. Uh, there's this movie that came out that everyone's got big feelings about one way or the other. And, <laughs> I'll give you three guesses. Yeah, I, I haven't watched this particular movie yet, and it's not because I, I'm not interested. It's not because I'm too cool for it or anything. I don't have like a, I don't have a strong opinion about it. Um, but I'm I'm also like of the mind that there is so much stuff out there right now that is made. It feels like it's made just for me. You know, I'll, I'll watch it or read it and be like, wow, this is made with me in mind. So when something isn't made or doesn't feel like it's made specifically for me, I'm cool with that. I can be real cool with it. And I can also like reserve uh, the right to not go on Twitter and talk one way or the other about it. I can just, you know, be like, oh, that one wasn't for me. Uh, so yeah, I'm... I, we're really blessed to live in a time where there is so much cool stuff out there that it's impossible to keep up with everything that's cool. There's so many holes in my comics readership um, that if comics stopped happening all altogether next week, I would still have a lifetime of cool stuff ahead of me to read. So, 
Yeah, good problems. We, we live in a time of plenty. So what is the epitome of Wonder Woman stories for you guys? And you can't say yours because that's cheating. I've said this before, so I've got no problem saying it again. And I, I don't want this to to feel to anyone like uh, like they're like I don't know. I, I'm struggling to find the words. So many awesome people and people that we know and people that we love have worked on Wonder Woman. So it's hard for me to pick a favorite. But I've I'll say straight up Darwin Cook's version of Wonder Woman is always going to be the it's going to be the thing that I am chasing. It's the thing that I'm trying to capture. In the new frontier, there's Wonder Woman's got a sequence. Um, she's not even in it that much. And it's so impactful. Yeah, it's it's like when you go to think about Wonder Woman, that's the Wonder Woman that I always think about first. She's with a bunch of liberated Viet- Vietnamese women, uh, and they're they're drinking they're and shouting and it's celebrating. It's beautiful. And Wonder Woman is so pitch perfect in that moment if y'all haven't read the new frontier by darwin cook you must like you have to go get it it's not super expensive uh do track it down it's one of the best like i i won't even say superhero it's one of the best comics that's well, ever happened one of, he's one of the greatest cartoonists to like ever embrace this earth yeah um, so I don't think anyone that we're friends with or that we know or love that's worked on Wonder Woman, I don't think anyone would disagree with me or shame <laughs> me on this. They might be like, oh, what about like George Perez work or some of the early, like truly bizarre stuff? That's got to be your favorite. I loved Cliff Chang drawing Wonder Woman, though. Yeah. His, or, his Wonder Woman is also like when I think about her or I think of his. He was great. Phil Jimenez stuff. He yeah. was you know, Rucka, of Rucka's course. Run was great. Rucka is tops for a lot of people. Um, yeah, there's so many people that have that have touched Wonder Woman, but like I say, for me, Darwin Cook. Yeah. Darwin Cook. That's it. Rest in peace, brother. I mean, it really is a wonderful moment, though. It's, it, I can't imagine anybody having any kind of problem with that for you you know what if you ask me like what's your favorite martian manhunter moment or what's your favorite green lantern moment or what's your favorite you say, Darwin Cook. i might just do like the new frontier like just, just get it like i can't i'm looking at it right now and yeah have, i was just i was like staring at it while you were talking i was like oh. we have multiple bookshelves in our house of course because we're both nerds and We've got this one shelf that is we put all of our favorite comics on. Like, uh, it's got like board games and favorite comics. <laughs> yeah, and so I'm just sitting here and I'm gazing at it and and wondering, you know, can I can I get there? Can I can I create a moment like that? We'll see. You know, we'll see. Maybe we already have, but we're too close to it. Um, but I do know. I'm going to be chasing that moment for the entire time that we get to spend with Diana. I'm going to be trying to create that moment for for someone out there, for them to be like, that is her. Every time I step on a book, I always want to think, like, this is going to be something that people remember this book, this character for. It's going to be, like, a story that I've done. Or, like, you know, you want to make something that is going to resonate with people so much that when you close the book, they just think about it, you know? I mean, I came home from the comic shop today with a bunch of the distributor posters that they just don't have room for. And one of them is the Infinite Frontier Wonder Woman family. And out of all the things in the stack that the guy gave me, because he just wanted room in his box, so he just gave them to me. There's a couple weird size ones just for weird size holes on my wall. But the Wonder Woman one is the one where I'm looking around the room right now trying to figure out exactly where it's going to go. You might have to rearrange things for it, you know? <laughs> I didn't know a poster like that existed. Is that with the Travis Moore art where, it, where it's got like a whole it's gang the of the whole, family? It's everyone like all in one. She's from the... Yeah, uh, and it's kind of like in those uh, bright colors, but not like 
fluorescent. Mm -hmm. I gotta hit somebody up on that one. That's awesome. Yeah. Find a good spot for that. I bet I bet Clark would give one to you. If I had two, I'd send you one, but I'm gonna be selfish and keep this one. Keep it. (laughs) Yeah. I I've got people I can bother. So do you guys have any idea how long you're gonna stay on this run yet? Well, people have asked that question. We don't know. We don't have an end in sight, um, which is both good and bad. You know, we have we have stories lined up until the cows come home. Yeah. And we've talked to their editors and, you know, everyone's on board with what we're doing. The book has been really well received, which is great for us being around, being able to like, stick around longer, of course. Um the length, the length of the run will depend on sales. Let's be let's be real. Yeah, and it, like so many things. It depends on sales. It depends on um, if we have cool ideas. You know, if we run out of ideas, we'll we'll step out. You know, we aren't trying to. You don't want to overstay. We aren't, your welcome. Trying, we aren't trying to phone it in. Like Wonder Woman is too too important. She's iconic. She has to have awesome stories. Uh, otherwise, it's a huge disservice to this 80-year 80, 80 legacy. It's her 80th birthday this year. Huge responsibility to be working on this title for arguably the most important female character in comics. And no, it's not beyond me that, um, that, I'm, that I'm male and I'm writing a, a story that is important to women. Uh, but that's part of the cool thing about having a female partner on the book and having a female colorist on the book and having two female editors on the book um hopefully hopefully we're we're able to connect with what's important for females when they when they read wonder woman as well as what's important for males and non-binary folks we want to be able to have this book communicate to people of all ages of all gender identities um it's really important to us that you know if this this isn't just a book that you like pick up your for your niece or something i want bearded weird dudes like me loving it too um but yeah part of it was making like after all the stuff that happened to death metal we really wanted to like i don't want to say like a clean slate because if you read the things that came before leading up to this it'll be it'll inform you know what happens in the run but it's not necessary so anyone who wants to come on board it's like this is a this is a good spot for that um and that was really important um to the start of our run we've got stories for i I would almost say years like we've got so many stories in our heads for this we've got it's, and every time we sit down and talk about it we think of more. We so. just took a walk earlier today and we're like, oh, this thing that we, that we're doing in, in a comic that isn't even out yet. <laughs> it's not even yeah. out yet. I was like, we set something up and I was like, I can't wait for this to pay off like a year down the road. Yeah. So we've got a lot lined up and hopefully like. We want to, we want to do a long game on it. We'll see what, what we can get away with. We'll see how long they'll have us. Uh, when they ask us to leave or when we see ourselves out, uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll have done enough to kind of cement ourselves um, as uh, as a run that's worth, you know, tracking down. Well, let me write that down. And Look hopefully it's, right. while it's happening, worth picking up off their racks. I mean, this is basically where I'm starting in Wonder Woman in comics. Like, I'd known her from the Justice League cartoons and from the movies and you know, however much you can know somebody from a video game, especially when it's you know Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe type stuff. <laughs> you know, <laughs> wonderful well, that's storytelling a, there. That's, that's a big thing. <clears throat> We're like, I've thought about this a little bit going in, and there's been so many incredible Wonder Woman books and comics that have come out. like, but there hasn't been like the Dark Knight Wonder Woman. There hasn't been like the Long Halloween Wonder Woman. There's not a book that you can go to. There's like, you'll talk about creators. You'll say like, oh, the George Perez Wonder Woman stuff would be great Brooke cut. But there isn't like a, a title where you think like that's, oh, this is the hush. It's like, you know, and Superman's got them and Batman's got them. But like, I think there's a lot of room in Wonder Woman to like really come in and um, do some 
do some big stuff. So hopefully that's, you know, the, the potential there is huge for us. And that's really what got me excited when we were first offered the job was like, there's so much here to do, you know, like Batman is, is fun and everything, but then sometimes you're, you know, I just did a Batman black and white story and it's like, Oh God, what do you write that hasn't been written? Like, what do you do for Batman that hasn't been done? And there's a ton of stuff, of course, but that's kind of a challenging thing. Um, with Wonder Woman, it's kind of like the sky's the limit there. Yeah. What kind of things do you have to worry about with having another Wonder Woman series going on at the same time? Right now, not too much because she's in the sphere of the gods. So a lot of it is just like there might be a couple characters we can't use. Um, But we're we're keeping her in this arc that we're doing. Part of it was like getting her, you know, oh, she's, you know, she's dead now. She's ascended. She's in the sphere of the gods. She's kind of like away from everything. So we don't have to mess with it too much <laughs> she's kind of in a bottle right now yeah um, and that that's working really well for us i think <laughs> i think when when she, you know it's obvious she's gonna get back to uh, a more status quo thing at some point and i think when we when we do that um we'll be the ones who are making these kind of executive decisions about which characters are going to be where you know if we're writing the core wonder woman book um i think we get kind of first dibs the thing is we aren't those kind of writers <laughs> like if you tell us oh this character or that character is off doing this or that fine like we'll tell a different kind of you know there's so many characters there's so many from. characters <laughs> there's so many stories to be told there's yeah. so, like we we're we're cool with it i i think it's exciting to have um more more wonder women out there i think the the cool thing is going to be further down the road you know when a lot of these characters start building up head of steam i think some of it is like giving them space to develop themselves as characters outside of wonder woman you know independently so you're not just getting oh they're all wonder woman and, and you don't want them you know to be in the shadow of diana you want them to be able to like shine on their own um in their own book yeah every every day someone will reach out and they'll they'll request that their favorite character from the wonder family show up in wonder woman and i i just want to say to those folks one please don't do that like please don't like i you're making it weird like i can't in good faith be like yes i'm gonna bring back this character that you like because i that's just not the way that stories happen they don't happen by request like furthermore i don't want to underserve your favorite character and right now ain't the time to be folding in a bunch of other characters that don't have something to do with this ascended wonder woman so please just sit back and enjoy hold your ponies. enjoy hold your ponies and enjoy the if, enjoy the ride if there's a character that you love from the wonder woman mythos yeah, there's a good chance they're going to show up at some point, but not in the afterlife, unless you want your favorite character dead and struggling in Asgard, <laughs> 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 which we, I guess we could do, but it would throw the whole thing off. Yeah. I never even thought about that. <laughs> we have so much to think about. It's, I know, that's right? That's the tough part. I mean, all the people mm, I would ask you to write about are definitely not Wonder Woman related, anyway. Well, that's that's part of the fun of what we're doing is um, because we can't really bring in members of the Wonder Family. We do have other members of the DCU that are quite familiar that are going to be showing up. Um, I'm I'm like rubbing my hands like an evil genius right now. Yeah. It's really, it's really exciting, and it's combinations um, that people will not expect, or hopefully won't expect. It'll be exciting and fun, and part of it's because growing up, I, I wasn't, I didn't have like a good comic shop near me. Furthermore, I was poor, so most of my, like my number one comic shop was a flea market, and the number one comics that I would pick up would be 
like the cheapest ones which meant that it was these d-list characters that no one wanted or cared about the variety packs where you get like two comics yeah. in the front and the back and the, the weird ones the weird stuck one. in the middle that you're just like what is this and you can never get a comic in you, you can't ever collect anything in sequence you're always no. gonna be missing like the editor's note will be like oh so you see silver surfer number you know 76 and you're like i will never be able to see that so i won't know what happens yeah. i just have to make it up in my that's head. how you become a writer yeah. is have limited <laughs> access to stuff and, and then fill it in your in your head cannon um but yeah so the comics that i grew up reading like a lot of people will be like oh like when i was growing up i read like teen titans judas coin and it blew me away Man, I didn't have that. I had like a dusty old Doom Patrol. Like, <laughs> you know, I had like these weird comics that nobody else wanted. Um, and it and it enriched me. So I, I think a lot of those characters that we grew up loving, uh, it's been really exciting to see how we can how we can have Wonder Woman interact with them. So I'm looking forward to when we get to that kind of stuff. Which isn't too far out. So folks who are interested in, in what I'm teasing right now. Uh, we got some surprises for you really soon. Well, I definitely have my wish list, and I am not going to put it in here. But long-time hey, listeners of the show know exactly who I'm thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go back so and now I'm gonna have to deep, Yeah, I'm going to deep dive in the archive. Oh, I'll tell you after we're done I'll recording. I'm just not going to put it in here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell me and bleep it out. I, I love a good bleep. Well, see, I just really want to have Jessica Cruz all day long. Please do it. That's all I'm going to say. Duly noted. I'm going to, I'm going to respond. No, I'm not going to respond to that. I don't <laughs> I want you to respond. Um, but I, I am I going to officially say that if you get any idea from the words that just came out of my mouth i want no credit for them or anything and you can pretend like they're yours and you have this that's, recording you know what that's that's the other thing is the minute somebody suggests that we do something we're legally obligated to not do it so yikes <laughs> that's part of why i didn't say anything well mostly because i don't have an idea of what you could do but also, I didn't want you to have to worry about the legality of it. That's what we tell people to get off our get off our backs. People can suggest characters. It's it's all good. You can't tell me a story that you you know like if somebody comes and they're like, oh, I think it would be great if Wonder Woman like flew to Krypton and then did this and that and the other thing. The minute you tell me that stuff, like then I'm like legally obligated to not do that, which sucks because maybe somebody's idea is like similar to an idea that I germanely had um, and now like for fear of a lawsuit I can't do that so a lot of times when people come at me with these big story story ideas I have to like block them because I can't I can't do that we can't do that Becky probably already had them blocked I block everybody Becky has to block lots of people <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't blocked me yet which is good <laughs> it was um it's a lot of it is like blockchain stuff like yeah pro- like people who are a problem you just run through and you just do a few blockchains and it twitter gets a lot you know more easy to navigate when there's not a lot of vitriol being spewed around you know or you yeah. don't see it anyway so when certain um, people are saying the certain probably. things that isn't a surprise that they're saying and you wish they would go away yeah exactly and you have to figure out how you're gonna okay i have an already question for you if yeah. i have a trade paperback and the cover for it is somebody that i really don't want to see on the cover of my book for a character that i really love what is the best way to get a new cover on that? Oh, um, there's ways to rebind books, which is, I think, kind of a pain. But I think there's like some some good Pinterest stuff on doing things like that. Um, yeah, some of it's just going to be like maybe doing it, doing it in Photoshop, printing it out. Um, I would say go get a brown uh, like grocery bag 
and make a make a cover like you would for a textbook yeah, out of that. And then bring it to a convention when conventions happen again and have somebody draw on it. Yeah. Get a con sketch from someone that you like. Who maybe didn't even have anything to do with the book, just like somebody com- commission them. A sick artist. Be like, draw on my brown paper bag. Yeah. Hi, I know who you are. Can you cover up my art from Horrible Person? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's hard. Yeah. I've got a couple comics in my collection. (laughs) Who knows? Maybe they're drawn by the same person. Love the comic. Hate the person who drew it. But so it goes. And finally, I have to ask the ending question here that I always get to. Because if I don't, I feel like we're going to be here forever. What advice do you have for somebody who wants to get into working on comics? Wow. You do the writer one and I'll do that. Okay, I'm going to do the writer one. So I've heard a couple people say this and I love it. And they say that breaking into comics is like breaking out of prison. And what they mean by that is when someone breaks out of prison they they find whatever hole the person managed to slip through or whatever problem there was in the security and they reinforce it and they really build it up so if there's like a hole in the in the corner of the bathroom that somebody's able to slip into the ventilation through they put a brand new nice set of bars in front of it so that it's incredibly difficult to ever do that again and I feel like breaking into comics as a writer is kind of like that. Everyone's got their own weird, funny story about how they got in or whatever. Um, it, but it's always completely unique and different from the next person. There is one thing that it surely works, like guaranteed to work. So if you want to be a comics writer, uh, you absolutely you can become one tomorrow and that is done by writing a comic like that's it you, you want to be a comics writer write a comic boom magically like the the wand is waved and you are a comic writer if you want to be a, a published comic writer that's a little bit more difficult that means you have to write the comic have have it illustrated or you draw it and then you have to pay somebody to print it because that's self-publishing, baby. And now you are a published comic book writer. If you want to work for Marvel or DC, my best suggestion is to first become a comic writer, then become a published comic writer, and then do it again and again like you're going to die if you stop doing it. And hope that somebody gets eyes on your work. And how they get eyes on your work is by going to conventions when when it's safe to do so. By establishing a good network of fellow creators, being super supportive of other creators. You aren't going to get anywhere by being angry and uh, insular. Like, get out there and support other creators. There's enough success to go around for everyone. And then, you know, if you're lucky... You get to work for Marvel or DC, but I'll tell you this much as somebody who's done a lot of self-publishing and somebody who's, you know, I'm writing for DC a lot now. um, It's, it's different. It's a different feeling in a lot of ways. Self-publishing is going to be more rewarding. Um, It's, it's hard when you write a book like Wonder Woman and all of a sudden you can go online and people are saying that you're terrible that you don't understand Diana, that you've ruined something, that you're, that you're blowing it. These, this is why, <laughs> like, maybe it's not for everyone. There was a moment after Immortal Wonder Woman started coming out um, where I was like, man, I don't know if I got the thick enough skin for this. Like, I was really being hurt when people would say negative things about the book. And thankfully, like, the skin is thickened up and I'm a little bit tougher, but it, it's just different. You know, maybe, maybe you think about your dreams and think about what you want out of being a, a writer. And you might discover that working on properties, commercial properties that are meant to 
make money, um, maybe that's not really what you want. Maybe what you really want is to be creative and to be free and to share your story. And what better way to do that than by creating something without expectation uh, based on your own drive and your own passions. So yeah, that's how you become a comic writer, a published comic writer, and somebody that suffers every time they open up Twitter and somebody is like, you <laughs> suck. <laughs> you're, you're mediocre. That's the same for me. <laughs> That's the same answer. No, I'm kidding. Um, as, a, as an artist, which is how I came into the business many, many years ago, um, I started out making mini comics um, and then I started working with a writer um, on some independent books I think as an artist it's the same thing if you're just starting out and you want to make comics start small don't don't go in thinking you're gonna do like a a one piece you know right away you're not gonna you're not gonna make a magnum opus right away do like five page comics or ten page comics and really get the hang of like getting these pages out don't get stuck on the details and remember that everything that you draw um someone's only going to look at that panel for maybe a couple seconds and then they're going to move on so if you can't get a hand exactly right don't worry about it you'll get the next one better then that's all you have to worry about just do it do one page and then the next and then just keep doing that and that's my advice and like like michael said also conventions are important going online maybe like i think another thing is um hooking up with like a group of, of cartoonists uh, so everyone can like work together and support each other. I think working in a group is as fulfilling as it is frustrating. <laughs> it can be a lot of fun, um, you know, and everyone's there to kind of support each other. And, and you know, cons are more fun when you have friends there. So yeah, yeah that's do, what I think. Don't wait for anyone to give you per- permission yeah. on any of this stuff. No one's ever going to give you permission. No one needs you to do anything. You, like there, if especially if you haven't done anything yet, like no one's gonna show up and be like, "Oh, I need to see a comic written by this person who I've never read any." And you can come up with all these big, wild ideas for what you would do if you wrote Superman or whatever, but you aren't gonna get that chance until you like show that you can do it. So like, start showing people. You know, write something. If you want to write comics and you can't find an artist. Uh, do terrible drawings yourself, that's which is what actually, I like to do. I was going to say that's super important because a lot of um, a lot of telling a, a story is knowing how much can fit on a page, knowing where your emotional beats are going to be, knowing where you know, your action is going to be, how it's all going to play out. If you can visualize that in your head, I think it makes writing a little bit easier. And even if you can't draw, I think it's important to try and at least put a few comics together that you've written. So that way you know like if you're writing something that is is going to be difficult to draw or if it's going to be a problem for the artist to visualize you will have done that because you you'll have that experience so saying i can't draw is not an excuse like to even you know everyone can draw there's people making everyone can draw there's people making good money as regular comic book artists can't draw <laughs> like it's can't draw is like such a cop out such a weird thing it's such a personal limiter and don't believe yourself if when you, you don't start enjoy talking. drawing that's right. another thing yeah you it, don't... i still think as a writer everyone should have to like you know write a 20 page comic and draw it yourself and then you'll know and then you'll know the <laughs> you'll know it's very difficult. <laughs> you'll know how difficult it is and then you'll appreciate your artist then you'll appreciate the process yeah i want to say all the artists out there i appreciate you totally <laughs> totally we get this right i'll slap the keyboard a, a few times and put together a, a page knowing that this is going to be the cause of such hardship for someone oh I, i'm like i sometimes i have to hold back and apologize Shecky had me she edited me <laughs> i wrote a draft of something where there's like chains all over the place i was really into chains i was just thinking about like calories and Ooh, spawn. spawn. And so I put all these chains in this scene. <laughs> and Becky's like, no, oh, I, I got rid of those chains. You know how annoying chains are to draw? 
And I was like, all right. Uh, yeah, but about cars and horses and things. That's well, not cars. Horses all draw. Becky judges horses everything. Horses are hotly contested, contested, though. A lot of artists I know don't like drive horses, but I don't like cars, so I think it's a trade-off. Becky just bases it all on what she personally <laughs> wants. <laughs> well, like, yeah, put, throw some chariots in there. That's fine. Yeah. People will love them. Horse-drawn carriages? Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of words to say, like, just go do, just go do it. <laughs> we, we love, 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 uh, telling ourselves that we can't do something. We're telling ourselves that I'm going to wait for that moment when people recognize that I'm good at something. No, you're, already, you're probably already awesome. Probably kick ass, listener. Go kick some ass and then show some people. It's going to be, it's going to be sick. You're going to make a comment. Don't wait. Don't wait. Start right now. I wish I started much, much younger. Uh, but just like everyone else out there, I was waiting for somebody to give me permission. Never wait for permission. Go do the damn thing. Well, I'm definitely not going to cut some sound clips out of that and send specific phrases to specific people at all. <laughs> Although I am feeling idea. personally called out for the not being able to draw comments. <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't my intention, but... Oh, it was. You can admit it. It's totally fine. I stand by my words. I stand by my words. Everyone can draw. It's a, like, it's our limitations that define our style. Um, yeah, people who, people who say that they can't draw, they, they get, need to be kinder to themselves. Go take a look at some, some comics. You'll be really surprised. I and, always like to bring up Tom Gould, who's one of my favorite cartoonists, and he only draws stick figures. But he's masterful, masterful, Incredible. so smart, so effective. So he did a comic for Free Comic Book Day in like the year 2000 or something. And it was, um, it was like the Adventures of Onion Jack or something like that. It was like a short story. And I cried at the end. I bawled. And it was like because of these stick figures. And I was like, I was blown away because I've, it was so effective and so simple yeah there's there's been really incredible comics um drawn by people with less talent than that person out there who's like i can't draw yeah, maybe maybe you just uh lack of vision and you know, maybe maybe the problem isn't uh in your skill and the problem is in you talking poorly about yourself to the extent that you're starting to believe it you know what's a good program to watch to get motivated about making comics is Man Ben. Man Ben. We love this show. Love Man Ben. It's a, you can find it all on YouTube, I think. You sure can. It's just M A N B E N, and it's um, it's incredible interviews with mangaka in Japan. Uh, so yeah, there's subtitles and stuff like that. But it goes through like the whole process of like writing and drawing and. It's just really inspiring to see people, and these are people who just like go. They just rip pages Crank out. Crank it. And, and it's like they're so open with sharing their techniques and talking about how, how they work um, and the things that inspire them. It's and it's super cool to see other people's studios. Like I love peeking into that world. So if you are out there and you want to draw comics, or you're trying to find that motivation to draw comics, highly recommend checking out Man Bad. Totally, throw it on Man Bad. The guy who, um, it's Naoki Urasawa, I think, who, he's the host of it. He did Monster, he does 20th Century Boys, um, he's like a phenomenal cartoonist, so it's really cool to have the host be someone who's so passionate about comics, um, that he makes them. It's, it's like fun to see him kind of gush over the creators that he gets on the show. He's like, we'll geek out over their comics, and I'm like, I'm here, geek we're geeking out over him geeking out about their comics, it's like... It's super cool and motivating, and um, it'll you'll just. <laughs> you I can also, talk about this show some more. <laughs> you also might feel terrible because some of the artists that are on there are so god tier. Oh yeah. That you will look at their at their art he and be like, me. no, I really can't draw. Isn't the guy who does crying Freeman like he's in an episode? And I was just like, oh, I'm crying. I was like, it's so good. Yeah. He's so good. It's really neat. And it's also a great introduction uh, if you're looking to check out some manga. Like, 
pretty much everyone that's featured on there um, has a huge body of work and it's everything that I've read that I've seen featured on the show has been well worth my the price of admission. So, yeah. But by DC Comics, by Wonder Woman. Yeah, also Wonder Woman. Uh, we're, we're inspired by manga. Yeah, we like manga. <laughs> we love a lot of manga. What do you read? You read manga. <laughs> I'm gonna have Can to we talk about some video games, too? Mm-hmm. What's up? Oh, I was just asking if we could talk about some video games. Just real quick. Oh, let's do it. Yeah. So let's play comics. You, you, what video game are you playing right now? Right now, um, honestly, right now it's been a lot of Doctor Mario with my wife because oh I've been playing. I've been playing things for the show, and I'm finally at a point where it's like I just need to take advantage of being on the official break that I'm on, so that I can play things for fun and not like go study them as I play them. Right. Are you guys super competitive? Do you guys have like a head to head? Yeah, we are. And Dr. Mario seems to find the balance because <laughs> we tried to do it with Tetris and she's so much better than me. And it's ridiculous. So I, th- I'm very good at Tetris. Yeah, like, Michael will wipe the floor with me with Tetris. And I thought I was very good at Dr. Mario. And I'll tell you what, Becky wins 95% of the time. And I get so hot. Like, <laughs> We had to stop playing. We had to stop playing because we found that we were playing it for hours because I would be chasing a win. Be like, give me a give me a rematch, and I would just keep calling for rematches until I finally would get a win, and then that would be when we were done playing because she would just so solidly uh, trounce me. The other night we were playing, and she beat me. But like my pieces were touching on the last germ. She was just like afraid no. of me. Oh. No. See, that that's grounds for divorce. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful win. <laughs> a beautiful loss, I would grounds say. Grounds for divorce. <laughs> I'm playing the Final Fantasy VII remake and I'm loving. That's that's where I'm doing. Don't, I get the song stuck in my head now. It's great. <laughs> Don't you love um, them though? I'm playing Mm-hmm. Don't you love the songs from that one, though? Oh, it's so good. It's so good. The classic soundtrack. It's cool because I haven't played it in years, so watching Michael play through it is like almost like playing through it again, only I, I don't have to like beat any of the bosses. <laughs> I nearly <laughs> smashed the TV during the squat competition, but I, I did it. I made it through. King of the gym. <laughs> that squat competition was nuts. I'm playing Fire Emblem Three Houses right now. I don't know why. Oh, it, you know why? I do know why because I I loved Fire Emblem in the past and and it popped up as like a thing that you might enjoy. And I'm, maybe I need a tactics game in my life right now. And Fire Emblem was always solid. And um and then here I am having to teach you know kids how to fight wars. <laughs> it's such a dramatic game. I didn't realize how like dramatic it was going to be. It was surprisingly tense. Dramatic and strangely problematic in some ways. Yeah, strangely problematic. But, you know, it's I'm having a good time playing it. And I love a tactical game, so. Yeah. Yeah. Have you tried um, Tetris Battle Gaiden yet? No. Uh... Do tell me all about Michael it. Michael just pushed up his glasses <laughs> like a faster. <laughs> I'm, I love Tetris. I think it's like the greatest game ever invented. So I'm, I'm listening. So it's one of the wonderful uh, Super Famicom Japan only releases. But, Do I have to get an emulator or something? Um, I cut the tabs off by Super Nintendo because copy protection was stupid back then. <laughs> like literally... Um, it's just the pegs on the back of the Super Nintendo cart slot were there for American games and they fit up into some slots on the cartridge but if you cut the tabs off then the Japanese games will just slide right in and you're fine oh that's incredible I had no idea about that that. I didn't start getting Japanese games until I had a Playstation so I used to get it modded but in this Tetris game 
you have different characters and they all have a different attack move and it's kind of like super puzzle fighter 2 turbo except you're playing tetris Stop while you're it. doing it oh my god are we all, all best right. friends now I'm... yeah I, 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 think so. we're best friends. I was gonna say that sounds like pu puzzle fighter and baby i'm in yeah i'm in that is another intersection for for becky and i in terms of games i don't know that we've maybe we played each other i don't once, think we played puzzle fighter together but I, i'm willing i'm gonna go on record right now and say it's not going Dr. Mario style. I was pretty good. I'm coming in hard, and I'm coming in hot. And if we get this Tetris Ninja Gaiden... You'll, you'll win the Tetris Ninja Gaiden, for sure. Because I'm not good at Tetris. You I get am. to throw attack things at him, though, so it's closer. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but he'll still win because he's better at Tetris. <laughs> You know what? Talking to yourself like that, and you will. You have to come believing in yourself. I believe if in you want to meet me on the field of Tetris, you have to come correct. I mean, I just know I'll lose. <laughs> <laughs> well, summing up this episode, believe in yourself. Michael and Becky, at some point, will both be back on to talk about video games. And uh, yes. my friends over at Shonen Flop probably got a couple new guests. Oh, excellent. Yeah, we, we're we so happy that this finally worked out. I'm um, looking forward to talking to you again in the future. And yeah, we'll, we'll have a lot to we'll talk, talk about. Yeah, we've got a lot more comic stuff to talk about in the future, but, um, but also I'd love to get more... Uh, terrible games brought into my life that will cause yeah. Becky and I to fight I <laughs> and ruin, ruin our creative partnership. Well, I mean, totally, <laughs> legitimately, we use Puzzle Fighter to solve arguments in this house. Uh. <laughs> That's, I mean, that is not a bad tactic. Uh, we we tried doing that with Dr. Mario, um, but I, I it always just ended up being that Becky would get her way. <laughs> Except for that five percent of the time, where she would like sneeze or something like that, <laughs> and, and drop eyes. a pill in the wrong. Yeah, I would unplug her controller sometimes. You do what you got to do. I mean, that makes you a horrible person, but I also understand the pain. I, I had a feeling you would understand. Game got a recognized game. So, new ending question. Besides anything Wonder Woman related, what of your own work would you recommend that people go check out if they want to check out your work? Do you want to do it for each other? Yeah, I was going to say. Um, for Michael, check out Tremor Dose. Um, it's his graphic novel with artist Noah Bailey. It's, it's Hitchcockian. It's Lynchian. It's about dreams. It's about bad dreams. It's about good dreams. Um, it's what it's hard to describe in like a single sentence, so I'll just kind of leave it at that. It's mysterious. Uh, it, it's will you know make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. It's creepy. It'll stick with you. Love that. Yeah. Thank you. Sticks you can to, get it. it sticks to your gums. It's through Comicsology Originals, um, so you could just get it on Comicsology Originals. And if I think if you have Prime, then it's free. Yeah. So you can just read it. Otherwise, it's like 140 pages for like six or seven bucks. Yeah. Uh, it's also coming out from uh, Dark Horse Comics in November. So yeah. if you want to wait for a physical copy, I don't hate you. Noah Bailey is like, it's his first comic, I think. This guy is, when I say guy, I, 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 I call him a kid because he's so young. He's so young. He's so talented. He's like, his art is, um, it's like Al Columbia and kind of Richard corbin uh, done with like pencil shading and stuff like that. It's like gorgeous and unsettling and so much fun to look at. It's a delight. Thank you, dear. And for Becky's work, uh, of course, the thing that I want to direct people's attention to is going to be by chance or providence 
which you can get very easily um, probably at your local comic shop or you, it's it's collected by Image Comics. And what it is is a collection of three short stories um, that Becky wrote and illustrated herself. Um, it's colored by Lee Luridge, who's absolutely fantastic and really ties the whole thing together. Um, but it's probably not even probably it's absolutely my favorite stuff that becky has done um because it is 100 percent her it is there is no consideration given to the reader or <laughs> with trying to sell a product or anything like that Th those aren't negative things but i think people really shine as artists when they're doing something out of passion and as such Becky made these mini comics pretty much for herself and it shows entirely it, it tells a, a deeply personal dark gothic fan, fantastical tale three fantastical tales that are all connected uh, and I absolutely, I absolutely love them but you don't just have to take my word for it uh, she's also won like Eisner's and stuff for them. So again, for people who are like, I'm going to wait until somebody tells me that it's okay to go do something. Becky was Xeroxing these things at like Kinko's and won, you know, the comic books Oscar for it. Well, I, didn't, I didn't Kinko's these. Did Just, come on, I'm trying to build the mythology. I actually worked with an anarchist print collector. Don't you understand cool. I'm trying to motivate people? <laughs> to be a voice of positivity. Yeah, Becky, they were they were self published. They were self published. Yeah. You can go self published and you can win big prizes. Anyway, by chance or providence <laughs> is absolutely stunning. It's fantastic. It'll break your heart. Um, oh, thank you. You're welcome. I love by chance or providence, and uh, you can pick up mini comics by both of us uh, through our through our shop. It's mysteryschool.bigcartel.com. Um, on, on that shop is a mini comic that Becky did called King's Story, which is kind of a continuation of what she was doing with By Chance of Providence. So go pop into the shop. We got pens and patches, and stickers, and mini comics and delights. So many delights. Yeah. So By Chance of Providence. Tremor Dose. Boom. And as always, we'll have links to all that stuff down in the show notes because clicking links is so much easier than trying to spell things. Yeah. <laughs> You're so generous. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much for having you, us on. Thank you very much. We, we appreciate it. I mean, I knew this Been was going to be a fun episode, time, but I was not prepared for how fun it ended up being. Oh. Well, now that we ripped the Band-Aid off, next time we're going full Monty. We're going to live stream Becky and I having... We're going to cuss so much. Yeah, we're going to cuss, <laughs> and we're going to play Dr. Mario live on the show <laughs> and see see how it all unfolds. Okay, Kaylee is challenging you to Tetris. She doesn't know that yet, but she is. We'll get it set up. <laughs> Listen, I'll play with the controller upside down backwards i'll play one-handed i'm a freak <laughs> i failed geometry twice because i had a graphing well i didn't even have a graphing somebody who sat next to me had a graphing calculator with tetris on it that's where i honed my skills oh this is gonna be good then <laughs> we gotta play on graphing calculators ti-84s or whatever they were still have mine somewhere i don't think i have tetris on it though you're, you're making mistakes that's the only reason to have that are you graphing anything no you don't need it for anything other than tetris well as always if you want to hear more from me you can head on over to twitter at play comics cast or playcomics.com where there's links to all the social media stuff check that out because there's going to be some cool giveaways going on soon there is one going on right now all kinds of fun things with that 
it's just a fun time. Also, pretend you've been hearing the rain and the thunder the whole time because I'm definitely not recording this later. Yeah, you know I am. Come on. If you want to help support the show, head on over to playcomics.com slash Patreon because that will forge you over to Patreon. Wow, imagine that of all places. Where you can support the show for a dollar a month. You can get these episodes early and lots of other random things that I decide to have in there. Please, dear God, let me have more time coming up soon where I can make more cool things happen. That would be amazing. If you want to hear some other wonderfully geeky shows, head on over to gunnageek.com where, big surprise, you can hear other wonderfully geeky shows. Bet you never saw that one coming. And if you like the music that we're rudely talking on top of right now, head on over to soundcloud.com slash best-day to check out Best Day's music. But most of all, just grab a game. Although now I'm trying to think of a good one that has Wonder Woman and that basically doesn't exist until Injustice. Or DC versus Marvel. No. Wow. DC versus Mortal Kombat. Because I can't remember which one of those came out first. Grab a stack of comics go find yourself a new favorite character. I'll Give me one second. More the than my chair. More <laughs> sure. <laughs> Good. Now I don't have to worry about my Thor making noise. There you go. <laughs>